creepy children's voices cliche. Two minutes of the side of the house to make sure everyone knows the upstairs windows look like evil eyes. Thunder scare! Okay, now flash the lights a couple times. Good. No, seriously, it'll look awesome when we put in the sound effects. This is a family of the heaviest sleepers in existence. How did they not all wake up after the first gunshot, but stayed fast asleep in their beds while he loudly shoots them one by one? Reading. Jesus Christ, it gets worse all the time. This guy took an exorbitantly long time to speak. He may be looking for just the right words, but based on what he says, it seems more plausible that he forgot his line. What time you make? Give me a ballpark guess. Three, three fifteen. Ballpark guess is insanely accurate considering that no McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. It could be a guest house with a little fixing up. New windows, fresh paint, an exorcism. That's a wood-burning fireplace. Oh. Be nice on cold nights. House Hunters Hauntings Edition. This is the kitchen. Uh-huh. Nice and spacious, isn't it? Really big. Barely any murders in this room. It's really the heart of your home. This your first house? We just got married. That doesn't answer the question, but nice exposition, yo. House is clearly possessed by the ghost of George Bailey. If you're planning on a big family, there are three full bedrooms. Plus we already have a family. Two boys and a girl. You are so bad. Why did he want the realtor to think they had kids out of wedlock? The detective said that only the mother was shot in the head, but this clearly f***s up their story. The first person the house drove insane was whoever installed a dance studio in the master bedroom. Anything you like? Now, this is genuinely creepy, because I thought my Blu-ray player froze. I just wish that all those people hadn't died here. So they knew the whole time it was a murder house? Not sure why they pretended to be so unimpressed for the realtor. Just go on and get ready to move. <laughs> why the hell are they so excited? There are quite a few more steps you need to take before you actually own the house. They definitely shouldn't be celebrating right after the walkthrough. I can't even imagine what the inspection will be like. The foundation of the house is strong considering its age, but all the walls are filled with blood, which is something to consider. No evil occurred for one entire month. Also, is no one ever going to turn off the lights in the attic? Are priests just allowed to walk into someone's house and go anywhere they like? I feel like this is a breach of privacy, even if he hears ghostly kid chuckles upstairs. The priest doesn't just look out the window, think to himself, oh, they're outside, turn around and walk downstairs. Why is he looking at these two flies like they're significant? I get that the flies signify death, but just two flies is a normal non-death amount of flies. Even though this is now a more appropriate time to turn around, I'm still not sure if the flies are there to signify death or the sweaty priest just smells really bad. Is this guy physically incapable of running away when a Satan house is clearly giving him fly warnings? Why lure a priest upstairs with giggling sounds if you're trying to kick him out of the house? Probably could have really spooked up the foyer. You're a man of God, confronted with pretty explicit proof of a threatening evil, and you walk away, leaving the young family behind, making a mental note to call them later. This house apparently possesses children to sleep in uncomfortable ways. Matching father-daughter shirts. The murder ghosts have the power to heat up plastic telephone handles all the way across town. Hello, hello! First of all, her phone troubleshooting skills are terrible. Second of all, are the demons possessing the phone lines, keeping them from functioning properly? Or do they just have shitty POTS lines? They clearly didn't conduct a home inspection before purchasing the house, so we'll never know. Mirror Jesus. Pencil sharpener is mounted on this doorway for easy access bumps and bruises when you cut the corner into the kitchen too close. They've been in the house a month and there's still of this you have to avoid while walking down the stairs. This kid sucks at falling down the stairs. Also, a sin on his parents for not taking him to the emergency room for the cuts he should have obviously had on his hands for bitch slapping that light bulb. Granted, the kid should be in bed by now, but you're doing this with an open door? Feel like a kid in the back seat of a car. Is he saying she makes him vomit? I wanna go home. A kid is an unprotected sex ghost that haunts you for at least 18 years. Also, they're really lucky she was rubbing her eyes, or she may have seen something that would scar her more than what she'll end up seeing during this movie. Also, did she just open the door and gently swing it open and immediately start rubbing her eyes? I don't know what he's so happy about. He didn't get to finish. <laughs> This is a sound a cat would make if you played it through a Casio keyboard that was being strangled by an Atari 2600. Only two grocery bags for a family of five. Also, I know it's just two bags, but they are huge. Take two trips, Kathy. Don't be a hero. There's a week's worth of groceries rolling down the walk. Kathy shouldn't be making stuff up around her crazed husband with an axe. They aren't rolling down the block. They aren't a week's worth of groceries, and you really don't need any help. And does your friend Jody like sugar cookies too? I'm unsure of whether the imaginary friend was a horror movie trope back then, but if this is one of the first times it's happened, I'm going to sin it for the sheer fact that it's been in almost every horror movie about people moving into a new house since then. There is clearly an eyeball in the upstairs window. I'm probably going to have a bruise now because of how aggressively this movie is trying to personify this house. We were expecting him, but he never showed up. It didn't seem like you were expecting him, seeing that you drove away in your boat after he arrived. No Amityville for old men. Good news, your murder house struck oil. Also, these ghosts are just more of a nuisance than anything. Seems like they're just trolling this family. This nun is the scariest thing I've seen so far. Just because your aunt the nun is visiting doesn't mean you have to dress up like you're back in Catholic school. Also, does this nun need to wear the full gear 24-7? Is there not something a little simpler for a personal day trip? Why are there 
their only visitors clergy members. Do the Luts just have no friends? And on top of that, none of them have even bothered telling them there's something off about your house spiritually. I'd leave as soon as possible. Your hair's getting long. That ship has sailed. He's looked like the lost BG since day one. I got work to do. I don't want to be up to my ass in boxes forever. This is supposed to make him sound increasingly cold and rude, but he makes a very good point about the stress of moving. She was shot in the head! She might as well say, I was dreaming about the events that happened in this house approximately a year ago. Okay, movie, don't try and put a red filter on just to distract me from the fact that you're showing me the side of the house for the 15th f***ing time. Because this demon's power extends to cars driving down the road. This horror just went hard, Tommy boy. I know the priest has some sort of sixth sense about flies, but they are f***ing everywhere in general. The car f***ing up would just be a coincidence. Oh, it's just some kind of little flu virus going around. Amy's got it too. The demon in this house only wants to infect the father and the daughter for some reason. Everyone else, f*** them. Money for the caterer, $1,500. I put it in, I put it in his pocket. If the spirits in this house want the family to leave, why would they steal this kid's money? If anything, this encourages them to stay and find it. I know everyone keeps commenting on how bad George looks, but if he would just wash his hair, he'd look fine. What about the caterer? I'll take care of him. I'll write him a check. And, uh, what about the honeymoon? I lost that money too. By the way, who the f*** is this? Demon f***s with the babysitter, rather than simply making her sick or telling her to leave. Why does this bastard discriminate between priests, the family living there, and under the table child labor? She's been locked in the closet for less than a minute and is already bloodying up her knuckles, and doesn't know about any malevolent spirits. We're gonna need you to calm way down, kid. Checks get canceled. Checks bounce. Checks is not cash. I'd be worried this guy is running a shady business that is a front for something. Anyone who is this scared of a check is probably up to no good. It's moments like these where I feel like I'm watching a rough cut of this movie. And I couldn't get out! Really, there's no lock on this door. Well, then explain this f***ing keyhole. What the hell is it? What are these spirits gonna do with $1,500? Good luck trying to buy an Apple II without a physical form, asshole. And I also felt a presence in the house! He has a lot of passion for a priest who hasn't really busted his ass to tell these people what's going on. I'd blame Detroit a lot faster than the devil. That's Detroitist. Also, trained priest is unable to distinguish between Detroit and the devil. Also, I get the sense that Murray Hamilton was always hired to play the skeptic that puts people's lives in danger, and that the filmmaker saw Jaws several times before making this movie. Well, has that become the fashion now to cover up? I'm pretty sure it's always been the fashion. Also, covering up a haunting is only like the sixth most dangerous Catholic church cover-up. We're just gonna walk away from it. Isn't that exactly what you did after you got bothered by some flies? We can add show-off to the list of possession symptoms. The windows in this house were built with razor blades in them. This kid's reaction to living in this house is phantom blood, seeing that it keeps disappearing and reappearing. Not one broken bone. Am I missing something? Did it really slam down on him that hard? And if it did, is no one questioning why this window fell with a force much greater than gravity? What's up? I don't know. You stay up here. Like hell? Yeah, why would she want to stay upstairs? That's where her own children are. I checked all the windows down there, none broken. And by checked all the windows, he means looked at one of them while he walked away. What does she tell you, huh? She says she wants me to live here forever and ever. It's amazing to me that demons in movies enjoy talking to children and telling them their hopes and dreams, for some reason. Is George just feeling super badass because he rode his motorcycle today? Why steal this library book when you could just check it out for free? Listen to what I'm telling you. Jesus, write a letter! Father? Father! Also, did the spirits keep Delaney from speaking and scramble the phone that we've never seen actually work? Pick one or the other. Both seems like overkill. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Kathy doesn't just pack up the kids and drive to church. Is someone taking glass harp lessons in the living room? Everybody wanted to come over to welcome you to the neighborhood. Who is this everybody he's talking about? Him and the Miller Lite? This guy might be the scariest thing we've seen so far. I'm more worried about this potential burglar or rapist weaseling his way into their house. Jesus, I'm sorry. You look just like that kid. Kid last year that killed his family. You know the house down by the river? Does the house only haunt people who look the same? Yes. Jesus loves me. Jody allows Amy to sing a Bible hymn without locking her in a closet. They barely tried to alter the music from the psycho shower scene. Apparently Jody is a Jawa. Rooms full of flies at the wrong time of year. I'd argue that rooms shouldn't be full of flies at any time of year. I'm very sensitive about these things, and I know about them. That's the great thing about having a sixth sense regarding the spiritual realm. You can be full of shit and no one will ever know. It could have climbed up the ivy. I mean, it's all over the side of the damned house. No, it's not. What is possessing this woman to tear down the wall all of a sudden? She absolutely did not want to go near the house earlier. Did the demon, who doesn't want anyone in the house, possess her to do this? Did Father Delaney, who clearly doesn't want her to do this, possess her to do this? I mean, what the f***? I come and go through here. So why the sudden urge to break down the wall if they come and go freely? Find a well. <gasps> this obviously possessed chick proves to be no concern to anyone in this room. 
Answer the goddamn phone after less than eight rings for once. This is what you could get away with in old horror movies. Satanic prank calls. Bless this house and all who enter here. New homeowners should expect a little DIY, but do-it-yourself demon expelling usually works best with a licensed contractor or priest. Oh, no. oh, oh, I can't see. This is a really bizarre way to blind someone. Could the demon not just come in and Three Stooges style poke him in the eyes? Also, that's it. He stays blind forever. Satan won! God damn it, this is my house! Isn't God damning your house the whole problem? Oh my God, what happened to your foot? Shouldn't you know by this point that it's demons? Let's just pack up our stuff and go. This is the best idea she's had so far. Sister Act 3, Gold Tending the Flock. The demons finally did it. They made Father Delaney fully transition to Darth Sidious. It certainly is beautiful here. Way to rub it in, Father Killjoy. Well, there's no story to get it right. This guy basically just summed up the entire movie. Oh my god. George. This must be entirely coincidental. Unless the demons were all just amusing themselves by luring a guy who looked just like the last guy to buy the house, then kill his entire family. It's a good thing Kathy figured out George looked like that other dude who killed his family on the very night the devil told George to start killing his family. Coincidentally, this pig creature was going to be what possessed Rick Moranis in Ghostbusters, but Harold Ramis had enough self-respect to make a different choice. Chopping down the bathroom door in a fit of ghost-induced madness was kind of the cell phone loses signal at crucial moment of its day. Was she really in the rain long enough to get that pruny? There was no hope that Greg would get down these stairs without falling. He can't even handle dry stairs. Also, I'm still not 100% on the demon's motivations here. Do they want more dead spirits haunting the house? Or do they want them to leave? If they wanted them to leave, they should have just gushed blood out of the walls on day one. It's very effective. Oh, God. Hey, the keys. After all, it was very common for people in the 70s to leave their keys in the ignition in case of haunting. If this is the gateway to hell, why is George just able to climb up out of the black ooze? If hell is just a pool of goopy black stuff, I'm not too worried about going there anymore. End of movie reading. Also, wait a minute. What the f*** happened in this movie? George was clearly the dude who killed his family at the beginning of the movie. And how did he get out of jail? And what made him forget about his past? And what was this demon? Was it Satan worshipper John Ketchum? Or was it the fact that the house was built on an Indian burial ground? And what happened to the priest? You yell barracuda. Everybody says, huh? What? You yell shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. You remind me of your father when he went here. He was a slacker, too. Oh, you're going to be very happy. It's a wonderful house. Marge Simpson sold her first house. The murder house. I never dreamed someone <laughs> like you could love someone like me. I think Ma Bell's gone wacko again. Ma Bell, I got the ill communication. Ma Bell, I got the ill communication. I must show you this. Lickable wallpaper for nursery walls. Lick an orange, it tastes like an orange. Lick a pineapple, it tastes like a pineapple. We have in fact caught and killed a large predator that supposedly injured some bathers. But as you see, it's a beautiful day, the beaches are open, and the people are having a wonderful time. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. The walls in the 53rd precinct were bleeding. How do you explain that? <laughs> <laughs>